Welcome everyone to the sector of deep space. Here you will find multiple things. To warriors made from constructs of light, to dragons flying across the stars, and many more than what I just mentioned. This is Anza, and for the first time on this channel, I'll be doing Archetype's Archive, and as for what that means, it means how once a bad deck became better over the years as more support will come out, as I explained the many cards in these two archetypes, and if you know me by now, the Galaxy and Photon are my favorite. And going in this, I'll talk about their effects, what they do, and many more, but did you know, you can play these archetypes separately, although that is ill-advised. Photons will be by themselves before Galaxy will debut a little later over the years the owner of these cards. Kite, or Kaito Tendro from Zexel, along with his ace monster Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon, and the sleuth of photons and various other light monsters, to collect a number of cards seen throughout Zexel, first created by Dr. Faker and Mr. Heartland. Photons will first premiere in Photon Shockwave, with Galaxy Monsters being released in Primal Origin, and now all the way up till today's CCG release of Battles of Legend, and even being our main set this year with Photon Hypernova. You may be a Photon if you are a level 4 to 8 and have random effects on a card. Warrior or Machine type with few exceptions, be a 2000 attack or an effect to get 2000 attack. Swarm the field with light monsters. Okay, for this next segment, I'll have the Photon and Galaxy monsters displayed on screen along with their effects. And I'll tell you if, you know, if they're bad or good or not. Starting with Photon Satellite, well back in the day this was good to help out Levy modulate for any Xyz play with your other Photon monsters. It doesn't see too much play in the dedicated deck nowadays. Next up is Curry Photon. So as you can see from the card art, it is a Karibo, but for Photons. As you saw this year, Galaxies got a Karibo of their own, which we will get to later on. As for this one, it is a hand trap, while being a pseudo full as burial for photons. Run this one on one if you want to have fun. And here we have a light beast, Photon Cerberus. While being a pseudo Jinzo and easier to summon, this card can single handedly stop trap cards while remaining on the field. Could be useful against Labyrinth and Trap Tricks, along with any other trap decks. The only problem with Cerberus is that it is a level 3, so run just with caution. Here we have his Photon Saber Tiger. I'll say it right now, this card is not very good, unlike Cerberus. This doesn't do anything useful, and it's a level 3, which the archetype doesn't have any rank 3 XEs. meant to turbo out galaxy eyes but nowadays you does not see any play in the deck because it's a level 3 and it doesn't do anything else except your normal setting when there is better cards even further proven because of the support that came out this year The lad himself, and with the special himself from hand for absolutely free, and I'll take it up your normal summon, and his gun, for your other photons. Here is our latest piece of support, the Photon Jumper. Once you send it to the graveyard, you can add any spell or trap to your hand, and if it's Galaxy Trance, you can go off from there. Well, Photon Crusher is just a uh, guy, level 4. Doesn't do anything other than change itself to a defense. Not really good anymore. Uh, I'll keep it brief. Uh, not very good. And we could turn this to Photon Circular, which acts like Math Next Circular. Uh, just another guy, 
was able to double his attack, but not really good because you have to use your normal song. Vanisher over here can special yourself for free if you control another Photon Galaxy monster. And if you do that, you can add one Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon to your hand. And if it uses Xyz material, it gains the effect that that Xyz monster can banish when attacking. An Advancer can special itself from free just like Vanisher, but it doesn't have the effect to add a Galaxy Eyes. However, it gains a thousand attack if you have another Photon monster. Here is our actually latest piece of support. The Photon Delta League, not officially released in TC. If you summon it normally, you can special another one from deck, and then you can't summon any other monsters except light monsters. Orbital is a retrain of another card we'll get to later, but you can equip it to another Photon and Galaxy card to search another one of those monsters. Oh, the first and only ritual monster. If you summon it, you can trigger this card, special summon galaxy eyes from hand or deck. If it destroys a monster by battle, you can draw a card. Here we have our level 5 light warrior, or slasher. Summon itself for free if you control another Xyz monster. It's not as good as Galaxy Soldier though. Um, Photon Leo is, is one of those monsters, not really good for the deck, and if you normal summon it, you gotta just shuffle your entire hand to the deck and then draw the same number of cards as shuffled. Here is Photon Wyvern. I think it could be good, but you need your normal summon, and I don't think anyone's summoning in a Photon Galaxy deck. Here is Photon Caesar. I can see it being good, however, it needs to be normal summon. And unlike Galaxy Knight, it can't be normal summon without tribute. Next up on the list is Photon Emperor. With the release of Photon Hypernova, you'll be able to get this card. Once it's sent to the graveyard, and you control a Photon of Galaxy, or if one of them is in the graveyard, you can special summon it, and then you get an additional normal summon of a light monster. That being said, it is actually very good for the deck to get better consistency nowadays. And finally, the boss monster of Photon, Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. It is the heart and soul of the deck. You run this at 3, 1 for a hand, graveyard, and deck. It doesn't do anything else other than being a name. However, sometimes its effect can actually be useful against like a Zeus or something to bait it out. Moving on to our next segment of monsters, we have the Galaxy Monsters. Able to make rank 8 XCs and make photons uh, not terrible. You may be a Galaxy if you're level 4 to 8. Be able to level moderate for rank 8 XCs. Assist photons. Be a warrior or spellcaster type. And have great use to recycle parts. First up on the list is Galaxy Eyes Cloud Dragon, but I would assume is Galaxy Eyes first being born. By tributing this card, you can summon any Galaxy Eyes monster from your hand or graveyard, make it for some excellent plays at the cost of your normal summon, which can be fine, but there's better options. On a second effect, you can target a Galaxy Eyes Z's monster you control, so test Cloud Dragon to it as material. With a once per dual clause, as I said a while ago, here is the Galaxy version of Karibo. Galactic Kuribo. If your opponent decides to go for Gabe, you can play this from hand to summon Galaxy Eyes from deck or hand, then have it be the attack target, making use of Photon Dragon's effect to banish. While acting as a return of the Dragon Lords for your guys, pretty good to use, but main deck is tight, so up to you if you want to run, run a bit. The weird cousin that no one talks to is Galaxy Serpent, which happens to be a tuner normal monster for some reason, but hey, Sprite Galaxy Eyes, am I right? Yeah, uh, Galaxy Worm is certainly a worm. Works like Delta Wing, except way worse in a level 3, which doesn't mess with the idea level slash rank force. Galaxy Mirror Sage is another one of those weird monsters that Kite used to save himself. 
but in today's standards, this won't really get us anywhere. Anyways, moving on to our better spellcaster, Galaxy Wizard, able to be a level A itself, but with a soft one's return to add any Galaxy card, meaning if you're able to summon them multiple times, you get multiple searches, which is pretty good. Using the next monster on this list as a conjunction to this one is a prime example. The Galaxy Summoner is another level 4 spellcaster able to resummon another one of our guys from Graveyard to make them a level 4. So if you have another guy on the board and then Revive Wizard, you can use his effect to search the summoner to make the target be level 4. A very good extender for us. The Galaxy Cleric is an in archetype pot of Atlas. Able to target 5 cards in the Graveyard, return them to the deck to draw 2 upon summon. But the in hand effect allows us to be an Xyz material for our monsters. We already have good recycling and already doesn't see too much play. Galaxy Dragon is like Photon Dragon in his teen years, but not much else to say about it since it doesn't do too much for us. Galaxy Soldier has always been awkward to use because it's a level 5, and better uses than Cyber Dragons up until now, with Summoner and another extra deck monster we will get to, but able to summon itself by discarding a light to add a Galaxy Monster is always good, also 2 of these equals side to infinity. Galaxy Braver can help extend depending on what level Photon Monster is in your hand. And by showing it, like a special hit, then it becomes that level. They're great for rank 4 or 8 Xyz ones. If we have one of our guys on board, then I can normal summon this up without tributing. Why is Galaxy Eyes from Great you have there? I want to add one copy if necessary. Weird that we have dinosaurs in space, but Galaxy Tyranno is a hand trap for galaxy monsters. When they're targeting for an attack, you can special summon this card, and immediately Z summon a galaxy of Z's monster, and make yourself an image of galaxy monster. Possibly one of the best cards in the main deck, after the old dragon is very powerful and fights two effects. Being able to extend and make your opponent explode. If you control a galaxy of Z's monster, you can special this from hand. And then you can use it to detach from the Xyz for its effect to activate. You can attach one Photon Dragon to an Xyz monster you control, or a special summon it. Also, if it uses effect in the battle phase, it doubles the attack of all number of monsters you control. Remember how I mentioned Photon Orbital is a retrain? Well, this is Orbital 7. Kaito's servant in the anime dealing with counters by tributing it to add a Photon Galaxy from graveyard to hand. Lilybot, when combined with Orbital 7, can summon it from Graveyard, but by attributing any number of machines to summon that many number of our guys from hand. So these two aren't good because of how still they are and also unsearchable. Moving on to our extra deck where a lot of them really shine, but a lot of unsummonable monsters with the monsters I went over. Producing a fusion monster in a Xyz focus deck, Twin Photon Lizard, you are able to pull off using Emperor and Jumper to activate their effects, but no one is using this. I do think there is potential, but further testing is required. Our first monster, number 83, Galaxy Queen. She is currently unsummonable for us because it requires 3 level 1 monsters, and if you know, we are a rank 4 and 8 focus decks. You just summoned your mom! Starly Jord Galaxian, requiring 2 level 4 photon monsters, is able to summon Galaxy Eyes by detaching 1 or 2 from hand or deck. Further reaffirm this is a rank 4 and 8 deck. Star Leech Photon Blast Dragon is a fantastic piece of support, able to upon summon a special photon monster from hand, and protects all your monsters with 2000 attack or higher from targeting effects and destruction effects, and our quick effect speed, able to revive photon dragon from graveyard. Star Leech Pallet Dynamo, able to target a monster, change their attack to zero, and negate their effects. If destroyed by battle card effect, draw a card. Not used because there's not enough utility. Next up is uh, Butterflies. These two definitely aren't used because one requires Butterfly monsters, and the other is not good in terms of effect. A Galaxy Cell Dragon is a little worse than Photon Blast because it only protects Galaxy monsters, but the special level of Dragon is nice. For our last rank 4 and a funny name to boot is Galaxy Photon Dragon. Boosting our lights by 500 attack and able to add any Photon or Galaxy card to hand or send it to the graveyard. 
giving tendency to Jumper and Emperor. Also, if you summon a soldier while this is on the field, it changes the level along with anyone else between 4 to 8. An awesome card that released this year. For our next unsummonable monster, unless you're playing Bistials, it's Photon Strike Bouncer. It's a simple monster to get with some burn damage, along with being a name for your photons. Galaxy Tomahawk is the same, but not for us. It was a special, a lot of tokens for Link in the synchro place. Not very good here. The ciphers provide you two. We started with Galaxy Ice Cipher Dragon. It was still a monster. You detach Afterglow and it was a level 8. You can overlay for any of your rank 8s. Neo Galaxy Cypher Dragon does the same thing as Cypher Dragon, but takes three monsters instead. You're mostly using regular Cypher Dragon. Cypher Blade Dragon is good in combination with another dragon we'll get to. This floats into Cypher Dragon and upon destruction, detaches one to pop a face-up card anywhere on the field. For our last big boss monster for Cypher is the Cypher X Dragon. Able to detach two to make all lights be untargetable. Can also revive a rank 9 or lower and make it again. Remember what I said about Cypher and Blade? Well, full armor does the same thing. Able to pop a face up card while attaching an equip card to it as material. Good for cleaning up cards. Now, personally, I think this card has the most raw name in existence. Number 38. Old Harbinger Dragon Titanic Galaxy. It do three things. Two effects it has are classified as hidden effects. The most prominent is able to negate spell cards and dissolve them as material. When a monster you control is a target for an attack, number 38 can detach to make itself the attack target. Not bad in some situations. Lastly, one of your Xyz monsters is destroyed. Harbinger targets an Xyz and it can attack equal to one of those destroyed monsters in the original attack. A good man he is. Love this guy. One of our main guys, and as I'm making this, Photon Lord got announced to get a reprint after several years, our monster in the game, and a searcher during our opponent's turn. Need tachyons can't be destroyed by card effects while having a Photon as material. Great for any Galaxy or Photon deck. Neo Galaxy as Photon Dragon was the original boss monster for Kaito, before his number manifested later in Zexor. If it has Photon Dragon as material, then upon summon, it gets everything on the field. By detaching one, you can force detach your opponent's mat. It gets 500 attack for each. You can attack that many times. Now for the real game ender, number 62, Galaxy Eyes Prime Photon Dragon. Combined with Afterglow, can do more than lethal. Able to one-hit your opponent or a monster with 3,000 attack or below. It gets bigger when any Xyz is on the field, including itself. This is how you plan on closing games out real quickly. Now for 62 of all form, Chaos number 62. A big man with a tower like effect to be unaffected by monster effect while having Photon Dragon as material. And it can attack up the three monsters during the battle phase. Detach Afterglow to make it stronger. For the set of Tachyon Dragons, here is 107. During the battle phase, can detach one to get all monsters on the field. If your opponent activates a card effect that resolves, it gains 1k attack each, you can attack twice. Hit out our max real easy. Chaos number is 107, does the same thing as 107, except during the main phase. If you have base one as material, you can tribute two to attack three times. Now for the Forever Banned card, number 95, Galaxy Eyes Dark Matter Dragon. Able to dump 3 dragons to grave, and the opponent banishes 3. Nice, but we don't have 3 dragons to dump, unless running Bisco Galaxy. Lastly, our links. Starting with Soul Flavor, very specific summoning condition. 
Recycles a Photon Galaxy from Grave. Make the pop a special summon monster. Card your opponent control by discarding a Photon and Galaxy for one Galaxy size Photon Dragon. Galaxy Satellite Dragon is an awkward card meant for 1 to 7, but its effect isn't the best to use. Would have recommend one of these. Finally is our spells and traps. A lot of them provide utility and disruption. Some are dependent on metal. Starting us off is Galaxy Expedition, allowing us to summon another one of our guys from deck to a level 5 or higher on the field. Great card to use. Excel like could have been the sprite starter for Galaxy, but we didn't have the restriction of being unable to normal summon, unfortunately. Galaxy 100 helps us foolish any of our cards to the graveyard, or for combo for Jumper and Afro. And if you special summon Galaxy Eye, you can manage one card from your opponent's extra deck and take their number of monsters to our field. Galaxy Trance is great for extending and going for game, as it requires a full top from Grave while especially the Galaxy in deck the same level while locking you to the archetype. Our ritual spell for the ritual monster. Don't bother using it. Only summons the monster. Hyper Galaxy fulfills Galaxy Eye's summoning condition except by tripping one of our guys with 2k attack and then the same for your opponent. You great for removal and disruption. Photon hands the Cypher Dragon buffer spells, allowing us to take a monster to control Galaxy Eyes or just an Xyz. If we don't, also available with the said monster effect. Photon Booster just makes all monsters you have and its name have 2000 attack. Nothing useful here. Galaxy Zero is a viral card. If somehow this is equipped still during battle, you can destroy this card instead to protect your guy. Photon Stream is just a simple ban that's also not once per turn. Only be able to use if you have a Galaxy Eyes monster on the field. Can be used on your opponent's turn if you control Photon Dragon. Photon Sanctuary summons two tokens perfect for summoning Soul Flame. At the cost of locking into lights, also not once per turn. Photon Lead just gets one of our light monsters out of our hand, general light support. Doomed to fail because of how slow it is, but Photon Chains to send one of our guys to activate one of these effects, or send Galaxy Eyes to do both. Summons the Photon from deck and adds any Photon card to the hand. Eternal Bond is how to shoot yourself in the foot, made for the rare mirror and is the worst Galaxy Trains, not run this at all. Eternal Galaxy is a good trap card when going first. If you're missing the last piece of interruption, you can target one of your rank 4s and immediately rank it up into a rank 8. Easier to do now because of all the new support. Photon Trider allows you to do piercing, and upon inflicting battle damage, you can destroy a spell or trap card. Photon Time Stop sets up our continuous spells and traps to place them face up on the field, but that's not what we're here for. If you're able to, or your opponent blind destroys your back row, this card straight up skips your opponent's turn, requires some setup. Our Battle Trap Photon Current just makes your Light Dragon monster get an attack equal to the attacking monster. Now you fool in any situation. Numeron Creation is kind of a win more or flex on your opponent because having 3 light dragons with 3k attack or more is lethal. But hey, you could summon Numeron Dragon for huge damage. And Galaxy Storm is disease removal for those who don't have any material lost. Very specific card. Don't run it. Galaxy Wave just burned for 500 each time you exist something. There is a potential FTK here, just not with Galaxy. Numbers Last Hope is your final play for a turn, paying half to summon two monsters from Grave to immediately exist summon. A number of monsters you only be able to summon once from extra. Pretty much your Hail Mary or last bit of setup. Galaxy Queen's Light just makes everyone you control be a level 7 or higher with the monster you targeted. Could hard summon Zeus if you are level 12 on the board. 
Galactic Charity is somehow a worse pot of prosperity and trade. No one misses those cards I've just mentioned are way better. Along with not requiring a Galaxy Aziz on the field. Galaxy Cyclone is our in archetype Speller Trap removal. Destroying a set card, it's an advantage to Cyclone next turn to pop a face up one. Also, slow but has its upsides. For our last set of cards is Tacky, I'll attack on Spiral Galaxy. Only searchable because of name. Able to make a Dragon Galaxy monster you control be unaffected by everything. Gets better if you have 1 of 7 since so you can activate this from hand. Attacking on Chaos Hole can be activated when your Galaxy Xyz are destroyed. You can destroy all face-up cards your opponent controls and then banish them. Instead of doing your normal draw, you can banish this card to resummon your Galaxy Xyz. Could be useful or searchable. Introducing the world's most insane counter trap card. Attacking on Transmigration is capable of getting multiple cards in a chain. If you control a Galaxy Eyes monster, this alone is omnigate, also unresponsible, unless there's another counter trap. The only downside is it's unsearchable, which is pretty upsetting. Now that I went over everything, this deck is meant for beatdown. Games often end quick when playing Galaxy. You can use this to determine if you want to play these archetypes or not. But either way, I'm glad you're able to enjoy this. It is my first time doing this and it would have been done faster if I wasn't sick. This was also my 1350 subscriber video, but at this time we're near 1400, so it is much appreciated everyone. That being said, all your support is appreciated, and links are down below in the description. We'll be continuing with Master Duel and other simulators. And the last time you'll hear from me because I do not like my voice.